Sorry. <laughs> it, you know what? I, it, it comes across more natural. I can't, I'm not a rehearser type person. I, yeah. Because then I sound rehearsed and it sounds horrible. Okay. It's better anyway. to fly by the seat of your pants, as the saying goes. You do it well. Exactly. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're live. So for everybody who's joining us, so thank you very much um, for joining us today at Beyond the Cloud for hashtag Freestyling Fridays, hashtag Unscripted Fun. And you probably just heard that little bit about how we just wing it, fly by the seat of our pants. But hey, if it works, don't knock it, right? So we've got, we'll do... Um, little introductions. I put up the Zoom link. If anybody wants to join us live, I will keep watching and I'm just letting somebody else in now. So what we'll do is we'll just, um, again, I think last week or the week before was the first week where we started not having an official host um, with us. And for anybody who joins us live on Zoom is just all co-host. And instead of taking long introductions to introduce ourselves, because we'll be here all day basically at some point with all of us here, um, is we'll just do a quick introduction and ask a question. So Lillian came up with a question today. So would you like to ask your question? Because I forget your wording anyway. Sure. So I thought it'd be interesting to see what's been one of the hardest parts or the um, hurdles of um, running your business that you've gotten through. So why don't we start with you then? All right. I had a feeling you'd ask me that. Um, so I thought it was pretty interesting when I first started and I met with clients, I would let them basically interview me. So we would meet that interview me and basically they would run the whole show. I've learned um, through the School of Hard Knocks and Tanya that, um, you know, I now interview my clients. So I really take charge from day one. I'll interview them. I'll ask them questions. Um, so it kind of puts me in more of a, almost like an advisory role, because now I'm really asking what are their pain points? What things are they looking for? What's not working? Um, and it's really helped me, number one, with pricing, um, because they're not dictating to me what they think the price should be. I'm now giving my price, depending on what I'm asking the question. So uh, I remember getting things like, well, you know, give me your resume, uh, you know, all kinds of kooky little things after being in business so long. So it's once I got over that barrier, that was a huge leap for me. And so now let me guess you're asking them for their resume. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now if I, you know, I mean, I even have like a little waiting list. So if I can't take them right away because, you know, I'm, I'm really busy those few months, they'll be put on a waiting list. So it's kind awesome. of a nice feeling to be on, on the other side of that. Awesome. Nice. And, and that's great that you've overcome it as well. So that's really a two-part question. What's the most different challenges? And hopefully you've overcome it, right? Now. Right. Yeah, I guess I was part A and part B. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, who would like to go next? I guess I'll go. <laughs> you go. You go, Jessica. Diane, sorry, Jessica. Hi, Diane. Um, mine is actually very appropriate today. Uh, being a solopreneur, I struggle with being able to set things up in a way that I could go on vacation for an extended period of time. Or, you know, say I got sick or like last year I needed surgery I was out of commission for a week of having things keep running without it being a mess without having to come back to put up fires and having to spend a week catching up right. so today this is actually being put to the test because apparently there's this huge hurricane heading straight from my house so I am in hunkering down mode uh, right now I don't have natural lighting here so I'm feeling like I'm in a cave oh. and I may have to evacuate so I already because of the business disaster plan that I have been tweaking, piecing together over the past couple of years, uh, I've been able so far, knock on wood, it's been working. I mean, I implemented it this morning. I already had a template email ready to go. So it, it took me like 20 seconds to notify all my clients. I am closed until at least Wednesday of next week. Your compliance deadlines are taken care of. Anything else, I'll see you when I get back. So um, crossing fingers that uh, the plan will work, but so far I'm feeling good about it. I'm just glad to have one. Good. And just, that's something that you we've constantly, like we've talked about these last several weeks when you've been on here is that, yeah, you don't go anywhere. 
<laughs> so that's great that you've got something in place, you know, to use it. And hopefully it works. It sounds like it'll work great. And hopefully everything is, is, is fine with you, like with you and that, you know, you're safe and that all your belongings are safe and all your friends and family are safe too. So yeah, hopefully right now we're in the wait and see game as prepared as can be, uh, about ready to get out. If it doesn't get the forecast does not improve. But I mean, I've been able to go on vacation for a week or two and have things be fine. Now let's see how it works when it's not planned, where at the last minute I just have to drop everything that I'm doing. Now, are most of your clients local within your area? I would say about half of them are in my state, but then I have other clients nationwide that if it wasn't for my email, they wouldn't even know that there's a hurricane struggling in the Atlantic. (laughs) Right. And that's it. when you said that, all of a sudden flashback that, yes, you know what? My husband had mentioned that to me like a day or so ago that there was there was a hurricane coming towards Florida. So, yeah, so it's going to be an interesting weekend. <laughs> yeah. So, Jessica, what does it mean to prepare? Like, have you, like, put boards up on your windows and all of that stuff? Wow. Yeah, so I have hurricane shutters on my windows. So right now, aside from a sliding glass door, all the windows are completely blocked off. Uh, the earlier today, I was bringing in anything that was not attached to the house indoors because it could become a projectile. Right. So all garden decoration, patio furniture, all those things having to come in. Uh, just uh, identifying things that are valuable, whether they be monetary or sentimental value, trying to protect them. Uh, and because this storm is big and I live in an old house that's not up to the newer hurricane proof building code, planning for evacuation. Wow. Now, where in Florida are you? I am in the Treasure Coast. Uh, that is the city of Port St. Lucie is on the East Coast. Oh. So if you were to go to the National Hurricane Center's website right now or any weather app that has the map of that storm, if you follow the line for landfall, my house is just right above it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Wow. So like practically through my backyard, but it's not my first rodeo. I've grown up with hurricanes in Puerto Rico. I know the drill. It's just a tense moment while you're waiting and trying to see what happens, but there's time for things to change. Yeah. But meanwhile, I just want to be ready because, you know, it's not, I have kids. It's not like when I was, uh, in my 20s, living alone, a renter. Woohoo, this is fun. Now, as a homeowner and a parent, <laughs> all these things you have to prepare for. Yeah. Right. Wow. So, one of the great things about this is everything that you do is in the cloud. So, you don't need to worry. All my files are backed up and my backups have backups. So, as long as I have internet, I can work from anywhere. But I am not counting on having internet right away. Right away, we do have a direct hit because that tends to be one of the things that goes. So right. that's why I had given the heads up to my clients, so that way they won't be me emailing me going, "What happened? Where are you?" <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Wow. Well, then, so the cloud is probably a great thing for you. You were like, woohoo, move into the cloud as soon as I can. Absolutely. Yes. And that's why I love being 100% virtual because if God forbid my computer is destroyed, I can work from any other device. Right. Yep. Awesome. Well, wishing you good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Good luck. So tell me, tell me where you are exactly. What is the city? Port St. Lucie. Port St. Lucie. That is in Southeast Florida, closer to Central, but I still consider Southeast. <laughs> I will be watching the news and thinking of you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think. Yeah. I think anybody, anybody that's uh, that's watching us or at least been on several with you is probably. Going to, I know we'll be doing the same thing now. Yeah. So you'll have scary all stuff. Thoughts. All of our thoughts being sent your way, so. Gary stuff. I lived in Southern Ontario for a little bit and um, the area that I lived in was, if there was going to be a tornado, it would come right through where we lived. Um, And there was a couple of times in my childhood where we went into the basement because the wind was so crazy and, but nothing, nothing like what you guys have experienced and what you might experience. So it must be incredibly scary. I can only understand a little bit of it, but I can understand a little bit because I have been, so I lived, we lived in Alberta for a year and a half and I was driving home from, um, 
from Calgary to Airdrie, which is where we live, just outside of Calgary, just like half an hour north. And I'm on the phone with my husband freaking out because there was tornado warnings all day. But of course, it's Calgary. So, you know, they're like, oh, whatever. I'll touch down in the middle of a cornfield or like, you know, grain field, whatever. I'm driving home. There is a hurricane to the right of me and a hurricane to the left of me. And I was like, holy crap. I don't think it touched down and it was far enough away. Like my husband was like, it's nowhere near you. It's, you know, tens of, you know, twenties of or whatever miles away. It just looks big and scary, you know, but it was like just, what I felt in that moment is probably just a minuscule. Like, mm. so I can, I can, I can relate a little bit. <laughs> well, anyways, so let's talk about like happier things. Yes, yeah. please. This is why I'm here. So I could get that's off the here. Happier things. Like, I look forward to talking to somebody that's not freaking out about the okay. storm. <laughs> All right. So, no, you know what? Talk about the storm is banned right now for the rest of the time. Okay. So what was somebody else's biggest challenge? I guess whoever wants to go next. My biggest challenge was getting home. Getting home. Can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, Carol. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of logged in on my phone here. Yeah. Um, no, we actually were on the seven hour ferry from uh, Newfoundland back to North Sydney. Yeah. And that day ferry w that we were on, the seven hour ferry, they canceled the nighttime ferry and the next day ferry. So because of Hurricane Aaron coming through, it caused torrential uh, tropical storms. So if we hadn't been on that ferry, I'd still be stuck. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, because you're just coming back from yeah. vacation. Yeah, that that morning that that we stayed that night in North Sydney, and then the next morning driving out, it was like torrential downpour. It was like wow. couldn't see more than like a kilometer in front of you. It was it was pretty pretty freaky. Wow. Yeah. But but then by the time we drove like two three hours down and out of North Sydney, yeah, it was fine. So all right, got out just in time. It looks like you had a really good vacation, though. I did. It was so amazing. It was, yeah. we did so much trekking over mountains and hills and valleys. You needed the break. You've been working really, really hard this last little while, so you needed the break. I, I'm sure you probably are, like, really dreading getting back to work. I know. I need a holiday from a vacation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I got off the plane literally yesterday, came home and right into a client's office to get things done. Wow. Yep. That's what we got to do. I never left. <laughs> yeah. All right. So who wants to go next? So Diane, you joined us, I think, after it. So the question was Lillian's question. So I don't know if you want to repeat your question then, Lillian. It was basically, I think, what your What's the, I guess, what's the biggest challenge or hurdle in your business that you've overcome? My question's getting better and better as I repeat it. <laughs> awesome. That I've overcome in the past, the yeah, biggest challenge or hurdle will definitely be processes. Yes. Yeah. Especially as soon as you start having any kind of staff, they're so important and um, they're, they're difficult to get right and they're constantly changing. Yes. So I, I think that they're definitely up there with always a priority, but never the time to get it done. Right. And struggling day after day with it not being right and not finding the time to make it right. Yes. It's difficult because when you're hiring staff and you're bringing people on, you're creating the processes and you don't have time to really get back to it. And it's, yeah, my, I know I was very similar to the processes, what I was going to say. And then I know we still have Karen and Deb to hear from as well too, but I like, I tie into that and mine was probably the learning to not micromanage because it was always just me for the you know longest time and communicating all around the processes because I tend to forget that people don't know what I'm thinking up here. Like the, the rest of my team doesn't, it's like, Oh, didn't you know I changed that? Like, how could you not know that I just decided to change that over the weekend? And yeah, so it's, it's the, the communication and the letting go, but you're right. It's all mostly around all the processes. Yeah, for sure. For sure. 
and Karen or Deb. Oh, we still can't hear you, Karen. How about if I do this? <gasps> yes, there. yes, we can hear you. Oh, I don't like that though. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually in my biggest hurdle right now, and it's kind of what you said, Diane. I, I still need to set up my processes, but I know I need to hire somebody, and I'm already working, you know, some gargantuan amount of hours. So I'm just trying to figure out where do I, what do I do first, and 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 biting that bullet. So I know I need to do it, and I'm getting there. And that's when you go <laughs> back to your processes. So. <laughs> and that's when you but go back and to get them working. <laughs> Or so that's you go back and start all over at week one of boot camp, <laughs> rewatch the videos and start setting that stuff up. Yes. So <laughs> I've, I've got my, my biggest one is the, the quoting uh, workflow is in there and I've actually used that twice. So, which is good that, uh, okay, great. I've taken on 10 more clients in the last couple of weeks, but <laughs> now I'm like more time. So you've got to deal with week five, which is the efficiencies around all of it. Yes. <laughs> so Week five, go back and watch maybe week this, five. Maybe this long weekend I'll have some time. <laughs> and, and you're right, it's, it's, it's hard when you're doing that. We seem to be always kind of like chasing our tails, which is why I try to hire before we need somebody, yes. even though maybe financially, it's not the smartest move financially. Yeah. In the short term, I know long term, it'll be the smartest move. Yeah. And sometimes that person is, you know, the one that can help you with the processes too. Exactly. Yep. So... Yeah. That's a thought too. Yeah. And not wait. No. And I know I, I was actually on my agenda for, for this weekend is to get the, uh, the employment ad up and going. So see what I can do. And again, that was week eight, right? Nine. <laughs> the, how, to go. Yep. And how, to, how to go through and hire somebody yep. in the most efficient way. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Try to find that right person. Yeah. Whereabouts are you, Karen? I'm in Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. All right. And Deb. Oh, sorry, Karen. You were still. I was to say, we're here still suffering the heat. So <laughs> I've got all my windows open today. So it's nice. It's beautiful. I, I can't wait for the time of year when I can open windows again. <sighs> well, for, for me, I'd say software. Software is always the biggest hurdle. And with the clients that I have, who wants to work with what? Because some of my clients still want to do their own. Some of my clients, I do all of it for them. And some of them, some of them it's kind of a mishmash. And I've been doing this for so long and long before QuickBooks um, and different, the so different softwares that I've used a hundred years ago. We'll just use that term a hundred years ago. <laughs> so yeah, it's more working with clients and getting them on the processes that they want to do, that they don't know how to do, to train them what, how to do, and then try to update them on a better software than what they're used to. Yeah. I think that's, for me now, is the biggest hurdle of trying to change their minds. I know a lot of people use QuickBooks. I know they love it, but it's it being around... Everybody. Yeah, being around as long as I have, I've seen a lot of different softwares and there are others that are better and work better than QuickBooks. But it's trying to change people's mindset to say, you know, hey, I've been using this for a year or two and I, I, like, I don't like this, but I do like this, and, but I don't want to change. And so for me, that's the hurdle of trying to change someone's mind when it's already set that they really do want to try something else, but they really don't. Well, I guess that just says that Danny DeVito's doing a good job. Eh? There isn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, it's just like, yeah. yeah we so are, are these, but we new, don't want to change. Are these new clients? Did that no, are, these are existing, existing clients. And they're just watching commercials and things and going, oh, should we change? Well, yes, they'll come up oh, and they'll wow. say, you know, we've seen this on whatever advertisement or whatever. H have you worked with this? And it's like, yes, I have. I've worked with that one, but these are the issues that come into play. And it's like, but, but we want to try something else. And then if you start to try to implement it, they change their mind and say, oh man, this is just too much work. Let's go back. And it's like, wait a minute. You're either going to go forward with what we've already started to implement yeah. or we're going to stay where we are, but there will be no more changes. And it's the wishy-washy back and forth to say, well, 
we've been talking to a friend of ours and they're using this and we want to try it. But they and don't want the, but they don't want the learning curve that goes with it. Exactly. Right. They want a one button push. I have heard that statement. I want a one click button that I can push and this is going to happen that my PayPal is going to inter integrate with everything with a one button push or Stripe or Square or even in QuickBooks and they don't want a third party app. They want to just hit one button that makes everything work together and it's like that day hasn't arrived yet. Jeez, yeah. I love a one button push. Make yes. my life easy. <laughs> and I hear this, be nice. this a lot. And there is no over the hurdle yet. This is yeah. still an actual uh, request. I hear quite a bit. Well, I'll tell you, whenever people call me, if the first thing out of their mouth is, I know a guy or I have a friend who, <laughs> oh, you know what? Conversation's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the big one. It's like, yeah. good and, guys. And, and you know what? And I, we don't have that issue with software with our clients only because we sell the conversations because they still call us for that, but we only support QBO. I okay. looked at things. Oh, you know, when I first got into this, I looked at like, you know, it was simply back then. So I looked at simply and desktop, uh, QB desktop, my mind, thinks the way that QB desktop did. And I thought rather than knowing two softwares, I would rather be an expert in one. And I know locally who deals with simply or you know, Sage that I can easily refer to. Same thing now that we're online. Again, we decided we'll make, you know, make the move. We only deal with QBO. It's not for everybody. I have people that now I refer to that deal with desktop people that refer to zero or like that, that work with all of that. So that way I can, you know, send them in the right direction. But yeah, we've decided it's just too much to, again, just do that. Go in and learn new software to change people over. And yeah, I used to let clients dictate that, what I, you know, what we did. And I changed that. Yeah. A little bit of time with Ron Baker. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so here's yeah. the thing. The bottom line is, is they all do the same bloody thing. They do. Right. So for clients to actually say, oh, we want to try this, there's no argument that I can find for changing accounting. It might be that they need a bigger product, not, you know, as they grow, that, that could be, that's the most of the one. time, most of the time it's price. They go ah. up and they look and they see somebody's got a special going on now. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, if you come on for the next two to three months or six months, we'll give you 50% off, you know, these type of things. And right. And but if you told them, to, and I'm sure you do this, Deb, but, you know, you say to them, but it's going to cost you so much more in learning curve. Right. You're well, not like going to say well, that's what we have you for. And so we just want you to set <laughs> up from one day to the next day. We want to go from QuickBooks to whatever. Okay. Let's see. So it's let, like, let me throw this thought out to you then, Deb. So when we bring clients on, we actually have an onboarding fee whether it be a migration fee, an onboarding fee, a setup fee, or whatever we call it. And we actually, when they sign into a contract, so we tell them, you know, it's anywhere from $1,000 to 2,500, but we actually waive it for clients as long as they stay with us a year. If they leave us before, then it's built into the contract that they have to pay that back. So why not come up with a fee like that? Just say, you know what, I have to set everything up again. Therefore, there is going to be a $1,000 setup fee or whatever it is. Are you sure you want to go ahead with this? Mm -hmm. And of course they That's have a heart a attack idea. and say no, but it's still the question that right. I'm, I'm battling at the moment. I've heard that several times just in right. the last few weeks. Regardless so. of your answer, they're still yes. calling and talking yeah. about it. Yeah. And that's the main hop hurt, hurdle as we're talking, the hurdle right at this moment in time. It's like, I think, you know, it's hard to say what, each party where that's where they're being driven from i don't know if it's coming from facebook or just communications in their networking you know or, or commercials on tv yes, or commercials wherever <laughs> they're getting hit but it's yeah. like i'm getting it across different industry types so it's kind of odd i thought if the, you know it was one industry like catering or something where mm -hmm. everybody's now moving and looking at a different software that you know, syncs with QuickBooks other than Cateries or whatever they're using. Maybe that would make more sense, but I'm getting it kind of across the board and it's like, this is odd. This is an odd thing for August 30th. <laughs> right. Going on. Deb, 
Are they looking to move to one particular software or is it just different ones? It's different ones. Some people are seeing the QuickBooks of, you know, cut their fees okay, back and saying, you know, can we, so when are you going to try and get mountain? Um, can we take advantage of that? And, and others are saying, you know, accounting see? suite is on board and I'm seeing that. Um, so, you know, just different ones, different ones. And then the, the ones are they're here. I guess they're hearing more about the free software, like wave accounting and yeah. anything that's free. We need to try now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> doesn't mean it's better, but any uh, free. Yeah. So that's kind of the hurdle for me. Well, free is like the worst word in the English language. I swear to God, <laughs> it's not free. It's never. Free. That's it. Yeah. And that's the thing. They want push button right now and free. And it's yeah. like, you know, God Free doesn't exist. No. <laughs> yeah. And tell that to the IRS when you try to do well, your taxes. You know what that does tell you is there's a huge amount of competition in software right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's what, you know, was kind of driven that way. It's like, wow, where is this coming from? And other than price, you know, is it something you really want to dive into? I says, because mm -hmm. for some of the clients, you're not big enough to need to worry about that portion yet. So right. yeah, it was interesting. So I don't know, like I said, I don't know if they're taking um, a networking class, if they've gotten involved in some seminar or something that's brought this to light. And I know QB Connect is coming up or, you know, things like that. So I don't know how much involvement that is, but uh, yeah, it was kind mm -hmm. of different this week. Hmm. Huh. And it could just be their inbox. I mean, my goodness, the amount of work that that the software companies go to to get an email address yes. so that they can start yes. to uh, actually send emails out to clients. Mm -hmm. yep. And that kind of thing too. And text, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and then you're bombarded, you know, you know Instagram yeah. and Pinterest and all of these, you're bombarded with all kinds of different avenues and I guess there's a good gimmick out there that says, oh, this will work for you. Push this button and it's done. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is not reality, guys. Come on. I know up here in Canada right now, zero is is really coming on strong and trying to get a, a good um, foothold in the Canadian market. They mm -hmm. are. I've had two emails this week, two emails, two phone calls. And, you know, I don't go to them. Um, you know, I don't go to the stage events. Uh, it's only the intuitive events because that's all I'm using. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that, you know, at one point I, you know, I am kind of interested in, you know, breaking into the market strictly from a boot camp perspective, though. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, working with the bookkeeper. So from a different perspective, I've already made the decision. Our person, like our 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 bookkeeping side of things. We're just going to stick with one again to retrain the staff to do all of that. It's, there's, yeah. it's not worth it because the softwares, you know, you know, Ezer is going to come out with something like this, and then Intuit is going to come out with something like, like I'm not going to jump back and forth. We're just going to stay. But I have thought about, you know, at one point, you know, kind of getting into the other side and going in and just meeting people there and network with people on the other sides of things. But I just don't have the time. But yeah, two phone calls, two emails, and I just like reply back, and I'm like, you know, thanks for the invite, but. You know, my, my plate's full. I can't make it to any of the road shows. And, and besides, I, you know, I'm still the current into it firm in the future global. So I think. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it did not look good to have a picture of me, you know, at a zero event, right? No, that wouldn't fly. I, don't I might get a little shun. Yeah. I'll go for you. I'll okay. go for you. Okay. You can. Oh. There we go. That okay. works. That works. Yeah, you know, and it's hard, like when we look at like some of the software and the clients wanting to, it's hard enough because I know we've got, you know, our own software that we're looking like, I know right now to try to get more efficient, we're looking at bringing in different things, but all of that takes planning. I mean, we're looking at, <coughs> excuse me, using knit payroll, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting back into knit, you know, versus payment evolution. There's a lot of things that Nick can do, but we've got to plan ahead of time and start things on January 1st. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, it's my allergies. You know, we're looking at using, again, business and portal auto entry for different things, but this all takes planning. It's, it's going to be better for the client, but we can't just like dump and wet. And I see Patrick from Veeam is watching. Hey, Patrick, you should join us live one day. Veeam is doing great things coming out soon to, um, to Canada which is awesome. I know you Hello. guys. Hello, have you left yet? Oh, Carol, you're, we can I hear you. Her. I just oh. muted her. 
<laughs> yeah, I think she forgets she's unmuted. So yeah. <laughs> I yeah, love Veeam. Veeam is one awesome. Of the ones that I use. Unfortunately, up until now, and I know it's not too too far ahead. I don't have a date yet, but I know that uh, that Patrick. Oh, see, look at he's typing. He's like, hey, he says. What goes into you selecting new products for clients? How do you plan that rollout? Okay, I'll get back to that in one sec, um, Patrick. But they, we can't do domestic right now with Veeam. It's coming um, right. with Canada. There's issues with, I guess, our Canadian payment, uh, Canada, Canadian payment um, agency or CPA, whatever they call it, the authority, whatever. It's, there's a lot more hoops that you have to jump through than you do in the States. So, mm -hmm. um, so, but that is, they've been working on that. That's coming. And when that does launch, I get- So you're currently using them for US? Yes, we use them for US. We talk about them. I mean, I absolutely love it. As soon as I connected with um, somebody who's not there anymore, um, probably about two years ago. Michael, was it Michael? Yeah, it was Michael Burrow. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, so he's not there anymore, but yeah, he kept me, you know, like right up on things. And just for the, the, the international, the wire transfers, that it saves so you know so much because you know Pluto and Waypay were what nine ninety nine to go from Canada right. to the states and so yeah we can so I use it you're right to you know to and from the states um, talk about it all the time like to the boot campers and whatnot because I absolutely love love what they're doing that they're coming in and giving the market a shake up and it's because they use blockchain technology and they can do it cheaper so, and I love it. Yeah. And their customer service is great because that's one of the things where I pick to make sure that I can have a, if I have a problem, I'd like to be able to speak to someone and yeah. they're awesome. You can just get a real person. They, yeah. Yeah. I completely agree with that. So, um, so Patrick just asked here again, so what goes into our selecting new products for clients and how do we plan that rollout? So personally, and then everybody else can, you know, jump in as to what they do. So personally, um, I don't like to jump on a whim. I don't think it, it gives, it doesn't give us a good reputation. If clients see us jumping around a lot, I don't think it's very professional. Um, and again, software is going to catch up very quickly. So I do a lot of research into the company and what they, what, what they provide. So it needs to solve a pain point that nobody else is solving or needs to solve it better. Customer service has to be number one. It has to be key and it needs to be reasonably priced. If something is a little bit more priced, but I'm getting better service, I'm getting better benefits out of it, that's okay. So it doesn't always have to be the cheapest, but hey, if it can be the cheapest, solve problems and best customer service, that's, even, that's a bonus, right? Um, and then what we do when we plan a rollout, so right now we're looking at again, a rollout for knit for January. So we're going to be working with clients ahead of time and you know get them on board and then really start probably about 60 days ahead of time, kind of starting talking to them and then 30 days ahead of time, you know, get the employees all set up and then roll that out for January 1st. We're looking at changing some over to business importer um, for getting information and so that we can start to use Chata with some of the clients, the ones that are using external point of sale system. So business importer is like um, to stand or your Excel trans, your transaction pro. Um, it works really good, but we can have clients enter into a Google sheet and that Google sheet can automatically run and send us an email. We can set it to like schedule it so it can run every day. So that's going to save us definitely some time with some clients and some frustration that we've been doing either manual journal entries every month or, you know, trying to fight to get this information in. Tanya, but again, I'm sorry, the business importer, what kinds of things are they uploading to you? Like what so, kind of information? So that would be, so if somebody pulls us um, like a monthly report or a weekly report, right. sends it to us and we enter it via like a recurring transaction. Gotcha. Okay. So we're entering it manually into there because their soft point of sale software isn't syncing with, with QuickBooks. So if we've got some that now, up until now, we've just been going in and putting a, just a blanket monthly entry to have the information in there. Mm -hmm. um, I've now realized, um, Sherry Lee Mathers did a lot of stuff you're watching. Hello, I'm talking about you again. Um, but she really, and she's been saying this for about a year, and it really didn't sink into me until I've really realized the, the power that Chata has, that we can pull the daily information. So if clients have the daily information, they can go in and they can, again, see everything 
by day in chat. A client can go in. I've got a retail store who likes to track the weather. He can go in and he can say, hey, what, like, what were my sales like and what were the weather on those days? And that information can all come out. But it doesn't work if I'm just putting a monthly journal entry in there or a monthly recurring sales, sales receipt. So I don't want to do more work. The client doesn't want to pay me more money. So if we set up a Google Sheet, and again, this is existing clients, I would charge new clients, absolutely charge them more. But at the end of the day, it's going to save us more time and be more valuable to the client. So I'm willing to call that a wash. So we're not going to charge the client any more or any less. We're going to create a Google Sheet um, so that it's automatically pulling the information to, into um, from the business importer into QBO. And they're just going to basically fill in the blanks. So we're going to get the client to fill in the, the blanks on the Google Sheet that we set up. We're going to schedule it to automatically, you know, run every day at like 3 p.m. or whatnot. We then get an email confirming that everything went through and if anything erred, which I love that we get an email as soon as it went through. And then we can just do a quick, you know, verify at the end of the month, reset the sheet. Um, and the way that it is, it won't pull up any duplicates. So if the client's writing day one, day two, day three, that's fine. It'll only pull in the new information because we've told it. Okay. And we've been testing this out the last month or so, and it's worked really, really well. So now we need to kind of roll this out to the clients and try to get our clients on board because now they're going to have to do a little bit more work, but we have to show them the benefit. And just basically we're planning on saying, you know what, this is what you're going to be able to get from it. We're not going to charge you anymore. We're just going to, you know, let you do this. Mm -hmm. All right, Jessica just says, got to run. Hubby came home early so they can finish preparing for the storm. So hope y'all have a better weekend than me. So she's gone. Hopefully she's nice and safe. But yeah, so that's kind of what we do. Again, we look at it and roll it out kind of one client at a time um, as quickly as possible over a longer period. Um, you know, probably like a two month period or something like that with anything that we roll out for our clients because they've got to get used to it. They've got to trust it. But again, we also work it and test it ourselves before we even decide. So there's some, some software that I've been working with and looking at for a year that I haven't decided to implement until now because I didn't think it was ready or the right move. Or again, you know, I, I don't want to jump and then jump back. So what, I guess the rest of you in here. What do you guys like kind of do when you look at implementing new software in your processes? So for me, um, I look at, obviously, this is something that's going to help me with my client's work. Um, and then the other piece is, do they have a good onboarding uh, package? And it doesn't even have to be like an official onboarding as long as I can have direction with any questions that I have and I can start well, because many times there's some great stuff out there, some good um, apps, but there's just really no help in implementing them. So it's a very short process for me. It kind of just goes by the wayside. Um, so it really has to be um, the onboarding and the customer service. That's huge. It's to me, it's even more important than the pricing. I mean, pricing does pay d does, um, obviously is a factor, but if I can't get the customer service and, and a good onboarding start, it's just not gonna work. And that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. You know, it's, it's I am really quite worried about apps that come and go. And actually I was gonna ask that question how long do you think an app needs to be around before you jump in or do you just jump in right away? I would never jump in right personally. I would never jump in right away because you're right. They come and go. I would use it for myself first, very slowly. I'm not that one person. I'm somebody that you're going to have to court a while before I go and jump on because I need to see, I need to use it with my own files and play with it first before I bring on to a client, because again, that's my reputation. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to pull somebody over. Like we've already been through that once. We used Receipt Bank at first. Um, we had everybody on Receipt Bank. Hubdoc at that point um, did not. Oh. There's a little bit of wow. feedback. I don't know who that is. Huge. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe it's Debbie. Yeah, it must <laughs> be dead. She's out in the middle of nowhere. So I know maybe the rattlesnakes are playing with her, her reception.
mansion or something. Uh, but so we were with the receipt bank and then we moved to Hupdoc just simply because, you know, uh, it was bulk cost. It was the cost of things. So receipt bank was a lot more expensive back in those days. They didn't have the bulk pricing, moved everything over to Hupdoc once they got the GST straightened out. And then at that point, it was, you know, everybody said, well, what's wrong with the receipt bank? We said, well, nothing. We've just got this. So we've got some clients on Hubdoc. We've now moved them back two years later to receipt bank. And, you know, some, again, people are questioning well, why the move, you know, they're always going to question why the move. So it's, we had to make sure that we said, you know what, it's just a better place now. We're going to bring an auto entry, but I'm not going to take these clients. I just moved to receipt bank a year ago and moved them over to auto entry. We're going to use auto entry to solve different problems, you know, because again, I don't like to be jumping around a lot. If we're going to jump around and use something that we're using the back end, testing out that the clients don't even see that's something completely different. Mm-hmm. So that's my thoughts on it. So when, Tanya, when you say you, you actually do your due diligence and check out the company, like w- that's a really good example. Auto entry in reality is fairly new to our market, but they like they've been around forever and they're huge in other countries so i i feel a whole lot more better about taking a look at that app to see if it's gonna fit anything that i need to have done than i would for something like unfortunately hubdoc right because so many of them and this is exactly how innovation happens but, you know, brand new kids come out of university with their, um, you know, dream of coming up with the latest app and they do some really cool work and it would, you know, be fantastic, but they're, they're not stable and they're not, I mean, it's no different than us looking at a client, a potential client, yeah. and you go, well, look at this cash flow. They're really bad at actually managing their cash, their credit cards are up to their, like, do you take that client on? Probably not. Cause you're going to worry about getting paid. Yep. I tend to have the same attitude with apps. Like I'm, you might be the latest and greatest thing, but until I know that you've got the business sense mm-hmm. and the money behind you to actually last longer than two years or that you're not going into this with the attitude which i think in reality hubdoc probably did was that they were going to sell they were only looking to sell which is why they you know picked at the time qbo and you know put all of their efforts into making it work so well with qbo hoping that intuit would buy them well it turned out intuit decided no it wasn't going to do that because actually Intuit's working on having that all happen in, in product now. Yeah, right. They are. Um, yeah. And then, you know, so then they turned to zero. So, and that caused a huge problem for a lot of QBO users. Yes. So it's so iffy out there and becoming more and more of a problem. I think that um, you really have to be quite sure. Well, you're right. And I'll tell you, auto entry, I've been talking to auto entry since, and it's probably longer than that. But the first conversation that I really remember that I actually paid attention was January of last year. Mm. So I've been looking at them a year and a half. And um, again, Sherry Lee Mathers, <laughs> she's like, I get so embarrassed. I don't like it when you bring my name up. But her, we talk a lot. Like we're friends. You know, we were colleagues. We turn into friends. Yeah. We talk a lot. We challenge each other and we both like to try to break apps and see what this does, you know, and I really, really value her opinions, you know, on a lot because I know the type of, of you know, R&D that she goes through with each of the apps and whatnot. Um, and so she was the one who told me and a few other people told me about auto entry again. I'm like, okay, you know what? Now I think I see a solution because what she said, it was the, it's coming in better than receipt bank for a conversion, like a multi-currency, yeah. mm-hmm. got a multi-currency client and that they have that it brings in the invoices. And we've got, again, one client who's basically uploading and we're kind of doing some manual entry because we can't get anything else. So it's like, okay, that's going to solve a problem there. So that one conversation that I, fi- I said to Tom, we tried to connect in Scaling New Heights and we couldn't. So we finally connected last week. 
At the end of our conversation, he spent an hour and a half with us, which is great because he knew I said, okay, now I'm serious. But the credit thing scared me. I said, I just don't get this. It scares me. And we actually sat down and broke it out. And as much as I love HubDoc, I love the Jamie's, I love the customer service. We're going to be taking some people over because we use HubDoc um, for the bank feed fetching. It essentially works out to like $4.30, I think it actually works out to in auto entry to do the same one. So yes, we're in the beta testing for QBO. So some of our clients are pulling it into QBO, but those that aren't, we can do that. And it's, it was $4.30 um, per connection. And that's not per bank statement pulled in. So that was one bank. I'm just going to have to, somebody had actually said that they thought it was actually per bank feed pull in. So I'm just going to verify that. But if it is truly, even if you've got one, one, one client, you know, that's got a, a savings, a checking and a credit card, that's now $15 essentially instead of 25. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be able to save money. Now I'm not going to turn around just in case there's a client watching. I'm not going to turn around and credit my clients back because that money is now going to be able to go into something else. Um, that they can get into that maybe, again, we can do something better with business importers. So I'm going to be investing them into other software that's going to help come into that to make things a little bit easier. But you're right. So this is a year and a half I've been looking into auto entry before we're actually using it. So yeah, you've got to make sure that they're not just here for the short term, they're in it for the long term and that they're going to be continuously going forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing I had an actual software person, um, software in the accounting industry say, and I've been watching since they said it to me, and it seems to be a trend. So they were probably onto something. They said that we're going to see in the future, the software companies take these things back in house. So back into product. Yep. And I'm certainly seeing that happen with um, quite a few of the software companies where they're now offering those services and having it more in the product. They are. <laughs> and we see Which that. always makes it easier. It does. It does. Let's face it. It does. QBO is doing that in the States right now with, um, you know, the receipt capture. I will say it's not where it needs to be yet. It's a yeah. great start. Absolutely. It's a great start. So, but there is going to be one day where it's all going to be in there. Yeah. Um, unless these software companies, you know, show longevity and continue to come up with more innovative solutions before the main, the main, you know, FMS is due. Right. So then the question becomes, um, how do you actually make the transfer over and how much work is that? So, you have everybody in receipt bank and then you're only doing QBO and this is just hypothetical stuff, right? That right. I'm thinking about. And then QBO actually gets that organized and it can bring in the bank statements for you and the receipt capture and stuff. Then what happens? Like now you want to move everybody back, but what happens to their data and how do you protect that? That's sitting in receipt bank. And like, it's so, it can get incredibly complicated and who owns the data and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that kind of stuff that um, I think that we have to probably pay more attention to before we jump quickly into. Absolutely. Apps. Absolutely. There's you're absolutely right. So receipt bank if we took every single thing that went into receipt bank and published it through QBO because there's no link, it's going directly in there and we backed QBO up with the attachments, I wouldn't worry too much about receipt bank, but that's mm -hmm. not what we use receipt bank for. There's a lot of stuff that comes through that we'll just, we'll, you know, see and we'll archive it. Yes. For certain reasons, different reports, different, like whatever we'll archive. So you can't, I haven't done this personally, but I have heard from other people who have that you can go in and actually download everything into receipt bank. You can download all the PDFs. Mm. So yeah, um, that you can do that. So that way you've got it on a backup. Um, it won't necessarily be in any, from my understanding of the way it will come in, it won't like necessarily be anything other than just a bunch of PDFs. I well, as long as it's PDFs and not a bunch of gobbledygook that nobody as, can make any heads <laughs> or tails out know, of, right? As far <laughs> as I know. Um, yeah, there's somebody on the call who might be able to answer that, but I'm not going to mention that person by name. I see them. <laughs> I see 
them on the on the in Facebook. But if anybody knows the answer to that, I'll just repeat the question. Please type in in the comments. Um, in the <laughs> is for receive. She's typing in a bunch of question marks. It's Sherry Lee. <laughs> yeah. She's hello, honey. Anyway, so it, and I'm sure actually she's actually the one who's done this, which is why I think she can answer. So Sherry Lee, it's in Receipt Bank. Can you go in and bulk take? Oh, Tiffany, perfect. Thank you, Tiffany. Yes, that you can download everything bulk as a PDF. As a PDF. So perfect. does anybody know? Does it come in as one PDF or is it a but like with you know one PDF document with you know your thousands of pages in it or are they individual? Because again, I've not done it. So yeah, Sherry Lee says, yeah, I knew she'd done it. <laughs> but these are kind of really important questions to our industry, right? So yeah. somebody should actually, I think it would be a fantastic thing for somebody to take on and come up with that checklist and sell it. Maybe Kelly, that would be, right? Oh. <laughs> somebody that has a checklist that says, yes, that you know they will do those things that we need to make sure happens because we need those downloaded in a PDF. Absolutely. Okay. So right? there's been a few okay, so on that. I have a comment for Receipt Bank. Okay. I have already downloaded it twice for two different clients. They do download to uh, separate PDFs. Okay. And they also maintain your data for 10 years. Yes. Yes. And I see here that you also need to turn on the, the share and then you can get a hyperlink as well too. Yes. Um, and then Sherry Lee puts it already part. She says she's got to download it in chunks and it's actually part of her disengagement process already. Yes. So there's and some Yeah, exactly. Know. Yeah, that's right. Because it gets into that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, that um, and she's got some really good thorough, you know, engagement, disengagement processes. And yeah, that's great because then that way they've, they've got it. Clients have it, boom, done. They can take over the file. They can whatever. They're given everything. So then they can't turn around and say that we're not giving them access to their data. Right? That's right. Or that, you know, we didn't protect their data or that, right? Exactly. And Tiffany just said too that she's helping Receipt Bank is adding this to the Zapier beta test. Let's keep our fingers crossed for that, Tiff. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. I haven't used Zapier yet, but I've heard I've heard it's 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 pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it's just all kinds of things for us to think about when we're when we're jumping on the bandwagon for all of the different apps. And it's I can't see it slowing down. It's it's just going to get worse. There's going to yeah. be so many more. Right. So some kind of process to make sure that you're choosing wisely um, would be really beneficial. Exactly. Well, exactly. Because again, the last thing you want to do is go and jump, jump something. Like I say, even with those clients, and it was almost two years that we took them. Like, again, they were with Receipt Bank. It took over. Why? 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 They're questioning. Doesn't it work properly? That my things, you know, and no, no, no. It's just for this. And then again, moving people back. I just, yeah, it's just, you don't want to, and again, it takes so much time. It takes, yeah. You don't want to have to get into all of that so much. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's exactly why with auto entry, it's been like over a year and a half. And that's been since I've been seriously talking to them. So yeah, anybody, anybody that's looking to try to get me to use their software, they know it's going to be a long courting process. Mm -hmm. I need, I need to be sure that they're in for the longevity before I'm willing to. For sure. And they're absolutely. So Sherry actually, I love her. She just says she learned her, the, her disengagement processes in boot camp, but she, you've added more of your own to it. You've got more details. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So did anybody else have any thoughts on, on that? We've got a few minutes left for your, your process of how you scout out the apps or decide to switch your, 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 your onboarding or changing process. Everybody's quiet all of a sudden. Is it too late in the day? Um, I think one of the things that I'm curious about is when you're with a client and you find out that they don't have processes that they necessarily should have. Like I had a client who asked me yesterday, um, or, you know, the next people we hire, we want to make sure they have an employment agreement. I says, oh, do you have an employment agreement? No. Can you find me one? <laughs> so... That's my next step I have to do for my client is find them an employment agreement. I don't know if IPBC has one that I can start from or if I'm starting from scratch. 
Look in your boot camp smart vault folder. Well, that was going to be my next question. Yes. I've been on vacation. I know. Watch your videos. Catch up. We I you know. Time. Guess what I'm doing this weekend? Awesome. There's a subcontractor agreement, an employment agreement. We've got the new client onboarding, um, onboarding guide or whatever the client handbook that has a lot of that stuff in there. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. So, so not- would you charge a client for that for setting that up? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. You know, it depends. It really depends. Um, I know a lot of people are saying yes, absolutely. Some of it, we depending again on the extent of it, I might give client resources that I have as part of my value added services, right? I charge more than most people in this area to begin with. That's part of the value. But if I'm going to sit down with them and specifically set up long processes, maybe I'm going to actually you know, put that a little bit more in the upfront cost, say again, stay with me, maybe two years, or you have to pay this for leaving or charge them again. I think to me, it depends on the scope of the work, right? And feels she charge, well, charge it. There's value in it. There's absolutely Yeah, there is huge value in that. I'm going to have to talk to you about it, Tanya. You know, you're right, Carol. That is something that every business needs as they grow. And there's a huge value in that. I mean, think of what a lawyer would charge them to go to a lawyer and have it done. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's just it. And I think I I let my heart think with my clients because some of my clients, they can't afford a lot. They're just starting up. And I know to get them to pay the prices that they're paying, they're already pushing their budget. So I kind of think that that's, again, I get into little bits, but then, you know, again, it's like, okay, if you want more of this, now we're going to, again, keep affecting the price, right? But isn't the conversation at that point, why, if they're that tight, is it really a company that should be hiring? Yeah. Right? Like, true. Like if they, oh, yeah, no, I, I don't have that problem, but I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. True. I mean, if, yeah. if they, if they can't afford to pay for a proper contract for their employees, then maybe they're not there yet. Maybe yeah. they shouldn't be hiring. Nope. Sure. Because the, the employment agreement is to protect protect themselves mm-hmm. yes and, and somewhat employed. yeah but also to to lay out exactly what they're responsible for under yes. the you know the local provinces ministry of labor and all of yeah. that and yeah yeah absolutely or what you can even do is um so sign up with like your local cfib you can get resources from them if you're not already, or if you don't want to handle that for the client, tell your client. So it's Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses. There is one in the States as well for our U.S. Um, friends. It's what is it? National Federation of Independent Businesses. As if the Karen right. yeah. works one day. Yeah. Um, and so my CFIB membership is based on the number of people you have. I think I pay $300 a year and I've got access to their lawyers. I've got access to their HR people. I've got access. If we've got calls, we can call up. Like there's so much you've got access to. It's, it's really, really good. Very supportive. So either, you know, grab, go in there and grab resources for your clients, or even if you don't want to be hands-on and don't want to get in that part of it, send your clients to them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as a referral, that's always a good thing is to be able to have the information to refer them to the right place and the expert that's going to, um, you know, make sure it's all covered. Yeah, exactly. And, and Sherry Lee just commented here, um, bam, you got it, Diane Mueller. My client just paid $1,800 for an employment contract. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, and frankly, I was disappointed into it, missing a lot of important things like the new bullying and harassment laws, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So $1,800. Wow. Yeah. All right. I gotta, you I know, gotta... if I was good, Carol, if I was going to actually, you know, if I found that there was quite a few clients of mine that were asking that question, then I would actually get one made that I liked that fit all small businesses. And then they would, Charging. and I would be reselling that and pay and right. charging them for it. Right. Yeah. And at some point you're going to make back your 1800 bucks. If that's what it's the- on my list of things to do. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you're going to make that back pretty quickly. Yeah. If you're, yeah. you know, working with businesses that do have employees. 
And you know what, even on your website, you can have, you know, like, um, you know, an employee HR tool toolbox or toolkit or something. And they can, right. again, go in and purchase, have a bunch of different things like that, that they can purchase from there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the HR toolbox, I mean, that's huge because there's so many times I go through stuff with clients and I'm asking them for this, 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 I've created forms, I've done stuff. And they're just like, Oh, we need that. What do we need that for? It's crazy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a lot of people when they just go in and start up a business, they just do it and don't look at, you know, any other part of it. It's funny. There was something yeah. on Facebook that I commented on. I can't remember who it was I was chatting with, but somebody was looking basically for a business plan. And somebody says, Oh, every business should have a business plan when they start. And I'm like, they should, but they don't. <laughs> and I guess she's just dealt with ones that have. And it's like, yeah, most of them don't. And I said, I said, you know what? I didn't have a business plan or a budget. Yeah. You know, I still don't work that way. And my business has come along just great. <laughs> but, you know, at least I know enough about the accounting. I didn't spend money. I you didn't, didn't borrow money, money is, the, no. is, is what it is, Tanya. Because anybody <laughs> that wants to go and borrow money needs a business plan. Yeah. Well, and you know what? I use my personal line of credit, but I it always got paid off at tax time. Yeah always got yeah. paid off the tax time, but you know, and, and I, I haven't had to use that in several years. <coughs> Excuse me. So it was always just to kind of, because again, the good I, news is even the banks and the lending facilities out there, they're actually becoming a little bit less rigid with business plans. And now you can put together something much smaller and they're tip they're They're fine with it. In fact, I think now like they, they don't call it business plan anymore. They call it business case. Oh, okay. So you're just, you're just, putting out there your case for doing this business, right? Right. And I've only dealt with, I think, three clients that have had business plans or business cases Mm -hmm. or yeah, whatever. And that's most people don't, and they're able to grow organically. And again, they haven't needed the financing and, but they still, yeah, they still, again, the same thing. What I need to do, what I need to know what. (laughs) And the reason why most don't have is because exactly right, Tanya, they don't go, go get money. I think, what did I see some statistics? 72% of all business owners do like finance it all personally themselves or with the, you know, mommy and daddy thing. And nobody's going to actually the banks anymore, or even the, the development banks that send that lend money. We have one out here in British Columbia, um, the BC development bank that um, lends money. They um, they're not going there anymore because they want, good financials and nobody's got them. Yeah. Well, either that or they're growing it smaller and organically because you now look at how many people like are small businesses and then work from home. More businesses, more people have businesses run from home than do outside of the home. And, and that's, that's not a trend that's going away either. That's no. yeah, that's increasing. Exactly. So, you know, you've got a cell phone, so you don't need an office. So even whether it be contractors, not even our industry, look at different industries, contractors, this, that, like whatever, People are working from their cell phones and their laptops on their kitchen tables and just don't have an office and are meeting people at coffee shops or share centers or yeah. co-working spaces or at their offices, they're going to them. But you don't need to do that. So therefore, if you don't need to have that big capital to go out, I mean, it's, you know, what, $2,000 almost to rent, um, to rent a place in building because we were actually just talking about that at the beginning of the call. Although we just redid the office in here. I think we're moving out next month. <laughs> it's only because we can get such a good deal. It was $2,000 is what we would have been looking at to move out, which is why we rent out the garage in the first place. And we're changing our co-working space. And we just went there today to take a look at it. And it was $150 a month. And we had another place already for 150, but this is huge. We have access to the gym. We've got access to the boardroom and we've got access to everybody in there. So it's going to be great for visibility. And when I started looking, um, it's a, the old Nortel building and they're renting the place that we can get a 700 square foot single office for $580 a month. Take out the 150 that I would have been paying them. That's $380 difference. All I have to do is pay for my internet and my phone, which we're already paying the commercial anyway. We flip it over and I'll have to pay a couple hundred dollars for them to change it over and run the new lines. But now we have access to all of this stuff we can use. Again, there are other boardrooms. We There's a cafeteria right in the building, the gym, and we're going to have visibility to everybody in there, which is huge. This is where a lot of the new, um, the new, like they call it quintivation. So there's a lot of smaller innovative 
you know, businesses moving in. And we've already got some of them are our clients already. And we're actually quoting um, one of the big companies in there as well. So it could be great for business, but you, for $380 a month more, and they're only five minutes up the road. I mean, and I don't even have to furnish it because we're one of the first ones going in there. Nortel actually went under and left all their office furniture. So everybody who's going in now gets to go and scope out and have their pick of the furniture. So there's couches, beautiful leather couches and chairs and nice seating areas. So we can just go and furnish it from what's already in there. So I don't even have that expense. Perfect. And you're going to do this next month? Wow. I think so. well, we've, we've sent the email off. I was thinking in January. Yeah. Sherry says hooray to work-life balance. Exactly. So I went up, I talked to my husband. He's like, yes, get, go, please. <laughs> go, please. <laughs> he works at night. So he hears us upstairs when he's trying to sleep, even though we've got it as soundproof as possible. So I'd still keep this to be able to write off my office space here too. But um, and so I'd work from home probably maybe one day a week or my first thing in the mornings or whatever. But yeah, to go there. and again, it's two minute drive down the road. My daughter's a little upset because she's like, so you need the car every day? Because right now I really only get the car one day a week and she really takes it six days a week. Wow. Congratulations. So, That's exciting for you. It is, but we just put all the work into this one. So we called Sandra today. She worked from home today. We said, this is what happens when you work from home. This is why you can't work from home. Big changes happen. We're moving, <laughs> but we haven't gone in. We don't know what space. So we're thinking maybe October, November 1st, but again, $380 a month more than we're paying than we would have paid there anyway. You can't go wrong to have a proper business space. Clients can really come um, or can't come without an appointment because they've got to buzz us and we, we have to let them in. So the building is locked down and clients show up here all the time. So yeah, I'm, even though it says, big sign says by appointment only and we lock the door half the time, they're still knocking in the face to the window. And, yeah, so we'll have Good to- Good for you. Good for you. Here. That's wonderful news. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. But like you said, it's, it's, and that's, but back to what I was originally saying is, yeah, that's why people usually start to work from home because the costs, you don't have to pay any more to have a home office. You have to pay more to get a commercial office where, you know, back 20 years ago. That's the problem. This industry is so cheap to get into. Yeah. Right. Uh, you don't even have to buy software anymore. Nope. You need a computer laptop and a desk and you're a bookkeeper. We would hope you would have the knowledge to go with it too, but. But we know for sure that a lot don't. You're right. You're absolutely right. And when you get people on the internet that says, you can be a bookkeeper and you don't need to know anything to get started or yep. pay any money, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. But yeah, but I think that's the difference of why people aren't going for a lot of yep. the business plans and the loans is because these days, a lot of industries, you can actually do that. There's social media to get your advertising out. You don't need to have that brick and mortar and that big sign. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's those beginner experts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> beginner experts. I, Who said I that? Do them all the time. This yeah, step. That, you're so right. Beginner, beginner experts. experts. That's yep. great. Just send your rattlesnakes after them, Deb. <laughs> I can live that down now. It's I'll play if I can send them COD. How's that? <laughs> there we go. There we go. That works. <laughs> okay. I got to go, guys. Back to work. Yeah. Yep. I'm just worried. We're late anyway. We're running over. So we will call it a day. Have we're a great happy. long weekend. Yes. Thank you. You too. And everybody great else out there. Everyone. See you later. Thanks, bye everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. Have a great long weekend.